Hello everybody, Epic Mewtwo here. Today we are back with another figure unboxing and I'm actually really excited to open this guy. Today we have the Dragon Ball Legends Super Saiyan Goku. Let me crack him right open here. Um, this is a figure that's been out for a little bit. I didn't get him initially because you know, got you guys know how I am with Super Saiyan Goku figures. I'm like, oh, if it's not really unique then I'm not really gonna get it. But I was like, well, this thing is really cool considering the fact that it's ripped straight from Dragon Ball Legends. And, you know, obviously I play the game. And I love figures that are ripped from video games like this, so I had to pick it up. So here's the front, obviously you recognize, but here's the side that shows the art. You guys, I'm sure, recognize this guy. This was the first Super Saiyan Goku in the game. One of the first sparkings in the game. So very cool that they actually made a figure out of him. Um, the next Dragon Ball Legends, is that a little scratch? Oh, that's tape. Um, the next Dragon Ball Legends figure that's actually going to come out, by the way, there's a toy sticker, is a Gogeta, which is really cool. Um, it's going to be the red sparking Gogeta from the, you know, original Gogeta movie, which is going to be really cool. I'm definitely going to be getting that. But this is really interesting because this is actually labeled as a Dragon Ball Legends figure specifically. Like, this doesn't come from another line, and it's a collaboration with Dragon Ball Legends, i.e. the Shalot with the Ichiban Kuji line. This is 100% a Dragon Ball Legends figure. Obviously, it has a Dragon Ball Super logo, but um, they love, 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 love to do that just because, I don't know, it's sort of a meme um, in the figure collecting <laughs> community that they like to... Uh, they like to just slap that Dragon Ball Super logo on there, you know, wherever they can. Why? I don't know. Like, this has nothing to do with Dragon Ball Super, but they like to put it on there. They even put it on some stuff that should have, like, the GT logo, which makes no sense, but oh well, it'd be like that. By the way, there's the little um, logo on the flap. Is it the same on the other side? Yeah. Actually, no, it's not. There you go. Alright, so let's pop this. Why is this just at the top? Weird. They always have that connected. That's okay. I do like this box, though. Um, I am a big fan of this box. It's really cool. Um, I think they just did a good job of sort of, like, emulating the effects of, you know, this card onto the front of the box, which is awesome. Alright. So let's take a look at this guy. What are we looking at? What are we looking at first? Let's see. Let's take a look at the head first, I guess. Ooh, the packaging looks a little bit roughed up. Sometimes, it's kind of interesting when they choose to do it, when they choose not to do it. Sometimes they choose to wrap the head up, like when it's a Super Saiyan head like this and the hair is really spiky. Sometimes they choose to put bubble wrap around it, and sometimes they don't. Okay, well obviously the hair looks a little bit weird just right here, because, you know, it's facing to the side and it's supposed to be like blowing to the side. It'll look better when it's on the figure. But this is kind of interesting. This is the first time I think I've ever seen hair with this specific combination because sometimes they do this little bit of a darker yellow but they never usually do it with a more matte sort of finish and like a less detailed sort of look i think that's interesting like here i have this handy just so i'll show it to you like this is sort of the same color this is the um bandai uh, master lies super saiyan goku the hair color is sort of similar, right? It's a little bit of a darker yellow. The shade's a tiny bit different on here, but you know, it's both going for that little bit of a darker yellow look-ish. And you know, this one is definitely brighter, like I said, but still you get the point. But you can see all the detail on it, right? But this one's a lot more simplified. Oh no, that's really interesting. It sort of reminds me of the um, Ultimate Soldiers, right there, my boy Goku. Sort of reminds me of how they did the hair for him. And this figure came out before he did, so I think that's really interesting. Okay, get you out of here, my boy. Alright, so let's put... Well, yeah, we'll put the head on. So this is actually a really cool body. Um, I really like this. How does this head go on? I feel like I'm not doing this right. Wait. Oh, well, at least they have the peg. Pretty good for you there. There we go. Yep. It's a little bit interesting. Okay. I need to push to get the head on. I mean, it hurts your fingers. Hold on, let me take it off camera real quick. So that is the one thing I guess I'll say about this figure already that I'm not a big fan of, is the head. 
Um, because if you, so there's a little bit of gapping right there at the head. If you pull it back, even if it's like attached, you can kind of pull it back a little bit. If you push it forward, it's not a real big problem, but the problem shouldn't be there to begin with. But nonetheless, though, this still looks absolutely incredible. You know, that is a little bit bothersome, but it's kind of blocked by the chin or by the arm rather anyway. And they did a great job on the arm sculpt. I love the veins when they do that on figures. Very good muscle definition. Oh my gosh, my man is packing, bro. Back looks pretty nice. Don't really like the arm gapping, but I'll deal with it. Shirt looks pretty good. Obviously, it's ripped. Let's take a look at it with the pants on. There's the hole. I like to just kind of like put my finger in the hole and then rip it open. Just because it's, I don't know, easier to get it open instead of having to cut it or whatever. Ooh, okay. I'm a big fan of this. So, sometimes I'll have to do a video... <laughs> examining pants on figures but sometimes they don't do it don't like this because it looks like that they put the muscles on after they made the pants piece right this looks like you know they kind of just painted that there which is okay but it looks like they made the muscle afterward almost like it's sort of like popping out a little bit like not popping out of the pants obviously but i mean like popping off the figure a little bit instead of you know they made the mold and then they kind of made around it i don't know it's a little weird. Love the shading on the shoes, though. This is very interesting. They got that light blue here and then the very dark blue on the back. Very cool, though. Pants are pretty basic. Goku pants. Nothing um, too, too exciting, but I do love this belt. Look at the little, like, cuts and the little edges on this belt. They did a great job with the detail on the belt. It can stand on its own, but let's go ahead and take the stand out real quick. Stumble. Gotta make the joke every time. Is his um, belt that ripped in the art? Oh yeah, I guess it is. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, the belt like right there has a little bit of cutting. Has a little bit of cutting. Interesting, okay. They really got that down to a T. That's pretty cool. I'm a big fan. All right, stand. Going, assuming it goes here because they, I would hope they wouldn't put it on the front one. Uh oh, did they put it on the front one? No, they didn't put it on the front one. They put it on the front one. Why? No, or did they? Wait, what? How does? Where does this go? <laughs> oh no, maybe they did put it on the back one. I, what? Alright, well, we'll move that to the side for right now. There's no picture of it with the stand on. So I have nothing to go off of. Okay, well, well, let's just put them on for now. Oh, that looks really cool. Ooh, okay, so he goes on like this. I think? Yeah? Interesting how they do a little notch. They usually don't, like, do notches on the big... Um, here, let me just do this off camera. They usually don't do notches on, like, the bigger parts of the figures. That's kind of a first. Usually don't see that. All right. This is not too bad. It does take a little bit of wiggling to get them on. Also, since the head is kind of loose, it's a little bit difficult to do that. There we go. Okay. So, pushing them on really hard, you can get rid of basically all the gapping, which is good. Okay. So there is a tiny bit of gapping um, right there. You can kind of see it right there. Here, let me focus it again for you. A little bit right there, but nothing too bad. Still looks very cool. Obviously, it is literally like one-to-one -to, -one to the Legends Sparking Art Goku, which is awesome. Looks very cool. Um, I love the detail. The hair definitely looks a lot better when it's actually on the figure. Because it looks a little bit goofy just, you know, as the headpiece. But I do really like this. Um, probably the only thing that I don't really like is just there's a lot of gapping on the figure. Is like the hair. You can't see that there. There's a little bit of gapping. Um, you know, on the back here, if you look, you can just see the... Here. You can just see the, like, the orange, like, that big line there is, like, the peg that you use to push it in. Not a big fan of that. It does kind of look like it should go in, but I can't get it to go in anymore. You guys know I push these figures really hard into. He does stand on his own okay. I don't really need the stand, I guess. I would like to figure out what foot it goes on, though. I would assume it would be this one, but there's not even, like, a... There's not, like, a line for the boot, like, rope. You know what I mean? Usually with, um, Dragon Ball figures, they put that on there. I'm assuming this goes here, but it still doesn't really fit. Like... It doesn't fit with the, the rope, and I don't want to ruin the paint job on the figure. 
Huh. I mean, you know, stands can be good if they're tight like this, but at the same time, if you don't know, if you like don't make it easy to put the stand on, then I don't really consider it a good stand. Yeah, like this definitely doesn't look like it works. And this looks like it might work, but the angle is just so odd. Yeah, I don't know. Very weird. That is actually pretty stable right there, but it's not obviously like in. Oh wait, I'm a dummy. We could look like this. Um, I guess that looks like it goes there, but I don't really... Oh, well that was a lot easier to put on. <laughs> that was a lot easier to put on than I thought. Okay, well good. Thank God it goes on the back. Wow, he's actually really stable with that stand, okay. It was definitely a solid figure. You know, if you like Dragon Ball Legends, I would definitely recommend pitting, picking it up. It is a pretty basic figure, you know, even if you're just looking for a normal, like, Super Saiyan Goku Kamehameha figure, right? It's pretty nice, though, either way. You know, nice paint job, nice muscle definition. The only thing that I complain about is the gapping, but y'all know I'm very nitpicky on figures. Definitely, though, it is definitely not that bad. Um, you know, I'm sure for anybody else, it wouldn't really be much of a problem, but for me, I'm very meticulous when it comes to these things, or meticulous, not, that's not the right word, very, uh, picky, I just get, I guess. Anyway, real quick, let me grab another figure to compare him to. Alright, I have not whipped this guy in a, in a long time. This is the V-Jump cover Super Saiyan Goku figure. His stand is unfortunately not that good, but I absolutely love this figure. Um, this is sort of another good example I feel like I could show you of like it looks like they made the legs right and then they put the pants on the legs as you can see you know there's a lot of like holes and good like definition on the legs it looks like the pants are actually pants right that's what it doesn't look like with this guy it looks like here that you know it's all like you know, the legs are kind of like popping out of the pants in the way of like they're coming off. But either way though, this is another thing. Yep, yeah, see, this stand on him has always been kind of bad. But nonetheless though, here's another thing that's kind of interesting, right? Another comparison of the hair color. The way that they do this is, I don't know, just kind of interesting to me that they decide to make like this one bright. Like, almost like... I don't even know what I would call this yellow color, but just very different from this one, right? And it's not even like the shiny Super Saiyan hair that they do on some other figures where they make it like sparkly, right? Some figures do it that way too. I don't know. They're never consistent with the Super Saiyan look and everybody kind of likes a different thing. But either way though, that is going to do it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely keep a lookout for that Legends Gogeta coming out eventually. Otherwise, though, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, by the way, real quick, um, I did get this guy for 20 bucks on Tokyo Taku Mode. And of course, if you want to purchase him, links in the description where you can do so. All right, catch you in the next one. I'll be you out. Peace.